Well, in our opening update, we've already talked about what's happening in Kenya, what technology is doing to some employees, sending them home. But there's nothing we can do because innovation, like they say, is the bit of the future. Now, we have an entrepreneur today, an innovator, who has come up with a technology, a prototype of a truck that can be used in rescue services. Necessity has been a major driver of great innovations in all human history. There is no doubt that all countries in the world have at a certain point in time found them hit by natural and man-made disasters. It is out of this necessity and indeed sure reality that Daniel Atima, robotics instructor, invented a truck robot prototype to help in search and rescue missions. We usually have problems with rescue workers because the line between rescuer and vict and rescuee is usually a very small line someone going to rescue can very easily become you know someone who needs rescuing so this aids them in locating people that need to be rescued so that we have more localized rescue efforts this robot has unique features that enable it perform its tasks what we use in this um, first of all this system has to be able for it, for it to have for it to be worthy of search and rescue, we had to, to um, make it have the ability to, you know, detect people, and that was the main. That was that's usually the main difficulty: detecting people who are still alive and differentiating them between from those that are already dead. Because a dead person is usually a cold body. So what this does is it's got thermal images, and those thermal images are the ones that pick out infrared signals, heat signatures. Of people. Once it identifies a heat signature, um, it transmits the GPS coordinates of that point, its location where it is. Because for it to detect the person, it's got to be close to him. So once it sees the person, it then sends the GPS coordinates to the operator's computer. The operator then can tell that, okay, there's a, there's a person who's still alive taking cover under a table in this section here of this building that has crashed so that everybody can now focus their, their search and rescue efforts at that point instead of, you know, for instance, taking an excavator or a bulldozer 60 tons over that person who would originally be alive. His motivation, as already mentioned, is not hard to see. At the time we started this, uh, it was the time when there was a lot of collapsed buildings in Kampala. There was, I think, like one every two months. So we thought we, we need to find a way to help solve that problem. So we started doing this out of that necessity. And that's where this came from. His mind is set on value that this innovation will deliver to the Ugandan society once adopted, given the crude methods often deployed in local disaster hit areas. You get um, all the guys who are right now focusing on search and rescue, teach them how to use this equipment. It means they can now have less downtime in case there is um, an accident. This is what he had to advise. As far as practical work is concerned, I would say um, this stuff is not foreign. There is no such thing that um, foreign brains are better than African brains. No, we, there's enough knowledge here, um, probably even better than most other places. So we just need to tap into that. There's a lot of untapped potential out in vocational institutes. There's, in, there's companies that are doing innovations here. From collapsed buildings to caved in extractions, Uganda, like any other countries, is not immune to disasters. It is exactly here that Daniel sees value and necessity for his innovation.